Hello. Hello, hello. This is Jen and a welcome, welcome. I wanted to talk a little bit about something that I think is really important and also something that I don't really see <laughs> talked about. So I'm going to introduce some rather radical, um, not, it might not seem radical at first actually, but really conceptually, um, these are some radical ideas based on a lot of the belief systems, a lot of um, our societal, like what we accept in society of what is right and what is wrong. And there are some fundamental beliefs that we as a culture, and when I talk about we, I'm talking about Western culture, but I'm also talking about the fact that even um, predominantly globally, we often look to Western culture as like this ideal, as this place of, you know, growth and development and um, getting ahead and evolution. And the premises is a, a lot of what I'm talking about right now. The premises is based on a very um, masculine, linear, um, goal-orientated, results-orientated model. And I'm not here to demonize that model. I want to be really clear. I'm not here to, you know, bash the, the patriarchy and just to distinguish um, the masculine and the patriarchy are not the same thing. So I just want to be clear about some of the language that I use because I don't want it to be lost <laughs> in these rabbit holes of semantics. I do think that it is really important to um, to kind of lay down a little bit of a foundation just so that you kind of understand the context of, of some of the things I'm going to talk about. So when I talk about the masculine, I am talking about the um, archetypal energy of how the masculine expresses. And that not, that's not necessarily to say men, that is just the masculine energy. And same thing with the feminine. I'm not talking about exclusively women. Um, it is the, the feminine essence. So what I mean by masculine, again, linear, structure, um, containment, um, form, linear, logical thinking. So basically, most of our society and um, lives are based around this structure, right? Schedules, um, timelines, goals, um, results, that is all a very masculine energy. Uh, the feminine, however, is somewhat underrepresented in our culture and um, I would argue to say highly undervalued. And the feminine I would define as non-linear. <laughs> Some of you might even think nonsensical, but really it is non-linear. It's fluid. It's expansive. Some really good examples of the feminine embodiment is things like nature. So, you know, in nature we have the whole gamut of like the quiet, calm ocean to like the crazy hurricane, right? We have like all of these different um, ways of beings and one is not better than the other. Um, but we have this like wildly vast range of expression and that is inherently a feminine trait. The, hem the, the feminine is also about um, reflect or reflecting back inward. It's about intuition. Um, it is more about feeling sense 
than knowing sense. It is uh, more about the body. You can kind of see, I even sometimes struggle with words and language because words and language are more like a pinpointed uh, masculine energy where the feminine is a little bit more experiential in its expression, right? So <laughs> we're going to land on that. And the thing that so the thing I wanted to land on this revolutionary or what I think is a rather revolutionary idea is that a lot of the ideas around what is supposed to be how things should be kind of revolve around this very um, masculine linear way of being. And that's not bad, but what it does is it doesn't allow room for all of the expression of the feminine, which is really a lot of the expression of how we experience life. That means range, that means emotions, that means all of these experiences, that means the good and the bad and the ugly and all of it being all welcome. So here is what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about something that I would describe as the biodynamic approach. And that's the language that I use because I've studied biodynamic cranial sacral therapy. And so biodynamic as a definition within that context basically gives some language to help me express what it is I want to talk about. But the thing that I want to talk about is really a state of being that is not embodied in our culture and that I feel that and I've seen with, like not just in my own life, but with working with clients, with working in the biodynamic field, working as a biodynamic practitioner. It's allowed me to see that this perspective can be a really fertile place for us to do some really deep, deep, deep healing work. And the wild concept is, so most of us are used to this very linear idea when it comes to healing and that it's um, find the problem, nail it down so that we can find a solution to fix the problem. The biodynamic approach actually acknowledges that maybe there isn't a problem. So maybe the thing that we don't like, maybe the thing that we don't want, maybe the pain, the suffering, the experience that we're having, maybe it's actually not a bad thing, right? So in the language of health, this actually is pretty radical because it's suggesting that things like disease, it's suggesting things like illness, it's suggesting even things like death, are not necessarily contradicting health. I want to let that soak in for a moment because basically what I just said challenges everything that we stand for currently in our society, right? We stand for, if you think about Western medicine, we're trying to eradicate disease and eradicate health and prolong life and prevent death or what we define as premature death. In biodynamics, we fully and 100% accept all of the expressions that are presenting as being part of potency and intelligence. This is really fucking radical, <laughs> right? This is something that we don't often even really want to entertain because it also means that it actually gets beyond this story. Like there is a story, I think, in the health and wellness and the spiritual community of like, you know, disease means something. And if you find and excavate like the soul wound or like the trauma and you like heal the trauma, then like you'll be healed. This is completely and radically different in that it's acknowledging that your trauma and everything and all of you is actually totally welcome and okay. 
and you can be in health. You can, you can be in disease and health at the same time. Now, a lot of that, like, <laughs> what I said is a little bit of a mind fuck because what I'm basically suggesting, like, your mind is kind of like, that's, it's either going to argue against that or it's just going to be really, feel really confused. But the interesting thing is that this is why I wanted to define the feminine is because the feminine has a place. Our body in its feminine essence has a place to really um, be with that because that's how we are designed. That's how we're actually cellularly designed. Of course we, we are. I mean, if we weren't designed to move through the experiences and patterns of life, they wouldn't be. So one of the beauties is biodynamic field is actually learning how to be in relationship with something that um, in cranial sacral therapy we call potency, but you can also call it life force, you can call it your vitality, you can call it God, you can call it oneness, you can call it universe, whatever. It is literally embodying that and learning how you currently embody that in your body right now. It's not something you have to learn. It's something that is your birthright. It's something that's always accessible. But we in our culture really haven't been given uh, a lot of tools and guidance in how to really develop a relationship with that, right? We, we aren't, we, we, for the most part, we aren't in relationship with our own biological nature, with our own wildness, with our own animal being that is full and ripe with, with so much, with so much potential. This is a place that we can actually hold all of those other experiences and expressions that we might not like. So in terms of our body, that means that instead of finding out why you're in pain and fixing the problem or getting to the root of the problem of the pain and fixing that, it's acknowledging that the pain is just really an expression. It's really just information. And learning how to be with that information without demonizing it, without making it need to go away, without making it need to be something else or have a lot of meaning and weight and all of it. It's a way for us to really get curious and be with some of those things, whether it's disease, whether it's chronic pain, whether it's um, whatever it is, whether it's trauma. There is a place that we have access to within our own selves that can actually, that's behind all of that, that doesn't need to make it go away, that actually has the capacity and the intelligence to hold it. Just like um, a, a parent has the capacity to hold and soothe a child that has been hurt, that needs a little bit of love and support and kindness and compassion. We can cultivate that place within ourselves to access and be our own parent, parent our own pains in a non-judgmental, non-expectation, non-results orientation kind of way. You know, imagine how you can meet pain or trauma if you didn't have to do anything with it or make it be something else or transmute it, or fix it, 
or make it go away or make it have some meaning and therefore identity on who you are. What if you could simultaneously feel whole, not needing fixing, and still have experiences that are not comfortable, that you don't like? To be with something that you don't like, that you resist, but also not having to make it go away, really accepting, deeply accepting those places. So this really is kind of a concept to sit with and just kind of digest for a moment in your being and yourselves. Your mind might be like all over the place. Your mind's going to do all sorts of things with this information. But I suggest just to listen to this, listen to the energetic transmission and let your body decide what it feels like. Let your body decide the truth of that, how it lands. Let your body say yes or no. Or maybe let your body witness and digest and and be there for you. All right, my dears. That is it for this transmission. I will see you in the next one.